Hello everybody, welcome back to my educational blog, Edis English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today, we are going to read the character of William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Here, we will try to understand Macbeth's psychological state of mind, his power and his ambitious journey, and his evil mind and the violence inherent in it and the moral effects on Macbeth. So, in a nutshell, we are peeping through into the character of Macbeth. Shakespeare has copied the very theme of Macbeth from Hollinshed's Chronicle, the source in fact. But Shakespeare's Macbeth is quite deviated from that of Hollinshed's Macbeth, I mean the character. Macbeth, Hollinshed's Macbeth is mere a soldier and his span's ac activities or his lifetime has been extended into a lengthy one and his voice or his concern of making himself king or putting himself a victor is the very uh, robust journey that is itself a battlement or a kind of a person's journey or ambitious goal. But the very conflict inherent in Macbeth's character that you will find in William Shakespeare's writing is Shakespeare's own. The moral dilemma, the study of evil, the psychological journey and that of the whole gamut of Shakespeare uh, Macbeth is like that of a, a vivid sections or bisections of one's persona and that is quite possible by the very genius of William Shakespeare. So, when we are reading Macbeth, the historical Macbeth character that you will find in Scotland is very much uh, detached from uh, dramatic uh, Macbeth that you will find in William Shakespeare. And that artistic exuberance that has been exhibited from or it started from 1606 and still it is being continued. In modern version of Macbeth, so many of the titles in films, in dramas has been portrayed and it is quite interesting one to study the very Macbeth or the very character of Macbeth through the eyes of William Shakespeare. Shakespeare's Macbeth is a study of the evil that is in every human heart. And of one man's downfall as he willfully gives away to its temptations. In fact, there are so many of the Macbeths that are living throughout the world in every civilization. To answer such tricky questions, Shakespeare depicts the tragedy of a man torn between an amoral will and a powerfully moral intellect. So, when the story begins, we find that returning from the battle, Macbeth is greeted by three witches who tell him that he will one day become a king. As a reward for his military successes, he then receives the title of the Thane of Connor from King Duncan, confirming the part of the witches' prophecy. Once Macbeth arrives back at his estate, Lady Macbeth spots her husband's ambition forward and together they hatch a plan to kill the king and thereby hasten Macbeth's accession to the throne. If we minutely see, if we minutely watch in Act 2, Scene 2 particularly, Lady Macbeth is waiting while her husband carries out the murder. When he enters in disarray, the murder weapon still in his blood-stained hands, he takes it upon herself to frame Duncan's grooms for the killing. The very potter scene is the very example of it. And to ensure that her husband's guilt is concealed. Again, Macbeth knows his actions are wrong, but enacts his fearful deeds anyway. And led on in part by the excitement of his own wrongdoing. So, the very psyche of the Macbeth is quite a person who is torn, torn apart with the desires, but the will force is lacking. In 
in terms of power ambition says thou wouldst be great and not without ambition but without the illness should attend it lady macbeth utters these words he taunts her husband in interpreting macbeth's murder of duncan there had been so many psychoanalytical interpretations that include emasculation insetuas or even audible fears certainly the spirits that seem to make macbeth potent actually make him important so many critics have made several comments on this issue this paradoxical motif runs the entirety of macbeth and is evident in macbeth's defeat of the macdonald and his murder of duncan as perverting the very natural order of the inheritance there is no art to find the mind's construction in the face shakespeare must have conceived of macbeth as a personality who is caught up between the old and the new world the views and ethos the conventional one and the renaissance one is everything jostled everything is in bundle the former the world news man's place on earth in term of biblical world view in the biblical genesis that it states that uh, the concept of the great chain of being the codes of conduct so one should not murder one should not dethrone a king but when the renaissance element is there it is trying to supplement the old ones with the new the pseudo scientific that is which was slowly but surely encouraging man to think beyond the traditional framework towards the direction of fullest use of the human potentials and who is the readers feel sympathetic to macbeth why so not because he possesses the high stature of tragic hero as it has been described in aristotle poetics rather we the readers we the audience understand that macbeth is a villain and a criminal but at the same time the vaulting ambition that macbeth possesses is also the ambition of ours that vaulting is colliding with the ethical parameters of ours so is being exhibited in the play so when we are reading the very violence macbeth the play has been presented not only against the backdrop but also against another situation which much attention has not been paid to actually the play starts at the crucial juncture of scottish history the king duncan has grown old feeble and sensing this the rebels and the king of norway attack the kingdom macbeth along with others must have conscious of the opportunity of ambitious persons because ambitious person always look forward to uh, much have been said and written about the association with the witches even if we ignore them we hear an echo of the witch's words from him from his first appearance on the stage just recall the foul and fair imagery so foul and fair day i have never seen the very utterance is quite evident the turning fair into foul is evident in shakespeare's character in macbeth's character we may presume that the grand success in the battle with duncan's enemy waited his ambition before his actual meeting with the witches and when he learns from them that he will be the next king he he, he is greatly moved 
this strange intelligence from the witches begins to transform into a potent ambition very soon at the fulfillment of the two prophecies as he is greeted by Ross that he is uh, the glam is an of order so if true instruction turns into true then why not the third so he says the greatest is behind right from this moment magmet begins to feel a split in his personality by the great pulse of morality on the one one hand and the terrible anticipation of the royal reality what is that reality it says why do i yield to that suggestion and he is himself yielding to that suggestion even though whose horrid image doth unfix my hair if we minutely observe macbeth macbeth demonstrates his good sense when he comments on the prospect of his kingship he is harboring a kind of a fear but the present fears are less than horrible imaginings so the horrible imaginings is there and that horrible imaginings stamp that macbeth is basically a good human one thing must be pointed out here that the king does not act prudently in throwing out the proposal of holding communal feast at macbeth's castle in such a fluid condition in which faithful men like the thane of cordor betrayed his trust in fact this creates an unthinkable opportunity which macbeth must have thought a satanic one because he is very much ready to seize upon and his ambition begins to take the shape of a potent plan even before the hot ended intervention of the lady macbeth so in securing the cottage throne macbeth deadens his moral intelligence to the point where he becomes capable of increasingly murderous behavior although he never becomes the monster the moral world as it sees at all times in fact he feels the pull of his humanity yet for macbeth there is no redemption only the sharp descent into a bleak pessimism so macbeth's wish to get that throne is the very nature of the time is the very product of that time if it if it is not macbeth somebody else should have done it so the moral effects as macbeth gets alienated from nature and faces the ordeal of absence of the divine grace he does not learn from the pricks of conscience on the contrary he goes on to affirm his authority in a wrong way here again his authority gets snapped by the intervention of banco's ghost one thing is very clear and that can be pointed out that right from the banquet scene lady macbeth's power also begin to disintegrate she cannot provide the same amount of support while lady macbeth slowly shrinks from the external reality and recoils in her own personality as finally we have seen her in sablamunism in sleep walking scene and she commits suicide the opposite happens with macbeth who undergoes a total transformation of personality and becomes more and more dependent on the witches he becomes a tyrannical treacherous suspicious ruler he emerges as a confirmed villain when he gets the wife and the child of macduff killed he is proved to be a great villain 
all these killings cannot be ascribed to the impact of the prophecies of the witches rather these all are the mechanism of macbeth the person who has the evil inherent so the evil that has been described in macbeth or the crime that macbeth commits and root becoming a Scottish king and the subsequent murders that he commits is all a mechanized understanding of the person who has stopped with evil and that evil is been born with the vaulting ambition so the reality of the macbeth's character or the evil nature or the character of macbeth who passes through the evil lens are the very mechanism of psychic journey of a person who has the robust ambition of achieving something that achievement is not possible in a straight cut way it is a treacherous way and that he takes it and subsequently becomes a evil becomes a devil and an absolute devil and ultimately succumbs to his own fatality his own wounds the wounds that macduff inflicts at last is not the final wound of macbeth's death rather he is wounded from his heart from the reality the evil that he had committed has rebound has bounced back to him and spoiled his life so the whole prospect of macbeth's journey is very interesting macbeth is such a character which needs greater explanation greater ideology i have just tried to explain from a particular point of view if you have any questions regarding this post you can just ask me i will try my best to give an answer like share comment obviously subscribe to my channel bye bye